Good morning, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day. It's a nice Wednesday right in the middle of the week, my favorite day of the week. This is the day where you presumably have gotten all the nonsense done already on Monday and Tuesday. And now it's time to actually get the work done. I love, 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 love actually getting the work done because that's how you become very, very productive and make things happen. People wonder how I am so productive. Well, the answer is I do the work. And um, usually Monday and Tuesdays are devoted to the routine stuff. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're free to just get it done. So today, we're going to be talking about luck, how I've been lucky, how you've been lucky, and how you can just forget about luck and live life productively. Because at the end of the day, you get the luck that you get. And that's that. Before we get started, though, um, I'm doing a webinar on Friday with Michael Acevedo. He's going to be reviewing hands that I played recently. I went to England, played a bunch of online tournaments, and did pretty well. But I know good and well that I made some mistakes. And Michael Acevedo is going to be taking a look at a few key hands from a $1,000 buy-in tournament that I took third place in. We're going to be doing that on Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, I believe. So make sure you check that out. There is a link to that directly on Twitter at um, Jonathan Little right at the top. I can actually give you the direct webinar link here in the chat if you want. Let's see. There you go. If you're on Instagram, sorry, you did not get that link. That's how it goes. No Nonsense Wednesday. I like that. I like that title. No Nonsense Wednesday. You get what you get and don't throw a fit. Indeed. So, first things first, the word luck turns off some people because they think that um, there's like, you know, a higher being, which maybe there is, maybe there isn't, and they like to refer to it as um, being blessed or being fortunate or whatever. I understand that words have power, but at the same time, we're going to use luck interchangeably for whatever you want to call this. Being blessed, being fortunate, being well, whatever. You know what I mean? Will the webinar from last night be on Poker Coach and Premium? Of course it will be. We just did just do a webinar with Jonathan Jaffe yesterday where he reviewed hands from his $10,000 buy-in World Poker Tour very deep run. So that was, um, that was excellent. And um, it's good. I'm glad we're putting out very high-level content for all of you. So, first things first, have we, sitting here watching this, been lucky? And the answer is obviously yes. And I think it's important to realize that life, even though you think your life is a very long amount of time, it's actually very, very small in the grand scheme of things. And hate to, hate to break it to all of us, but our lives are not all that relevant in the grand scheme of things. Jonathan Little is probably not going to do a whole lot to actually significantly better the world or significantly destroy the world. He's just not, right? Because that's not the spot he's in. And that's probably the case for most people. Now, you can do your best to be as influential and beneficial for the world as you can. But at the same time, I'm not the president or I'm not, um, you know, in charge of some country or whatnot, right? So that's okay. Recognize this. Also recognize that if you are here today with me, you have access to a computer or a smartphone or a device to watch this show. Presumably you have a roof over your head and you have at least enough food to some extent. And that makes you significantly more privileged than the vast majority of people in the world. I posted something the other day about luck on Instagram and someone said, oh, I know people in somewhere in America, like I don't even know where they said, West Virginia or somewhere that are, that are poor, but they're happy. And I'm not really referring to those people. Those people probably have at least a house or ability to get a house. I'm referring to people more like in Africa, where there are horrible dictators who are just going around killing people for no reason. And um, none of us, or the vast majority of us at least, have not had to deal with that. And if you had, I'm, I'm very sorry for that. But that type of existence is very, very difficult to rise up from because you're just tremendously unprivileged, right? And that's just pure luck. You don't get to pick your parents. At least I view that as luck. Luck, skill, blessedness. There is no skill involved in that, right? So right off the bat, when you are born, you get some genetic lottery, in theory, and you either get a good one, a medium, a bad one, or a horrible one. 
And all of us, I'm presuming, have been gotten at least not a horrible one. So right there, off the bat, we have been pretty lucky. We, we ran hot in the very first luck-based thing that, that happened to you, right? Next, um, your parents. Some people have good parents, some people have bad parents. I was very lucky to have good parents, right? They always tried their best. They always provided for my, um, my family, right? And, and that's good. Kevin says, you're from West Virginia. You're poor, but happy. Yeah, and, and look, I, I think again, though, it kind of goes back to the idea of if you're born in America, you're probably not all that poor because you have the ability to make $5 an hour, right? And that makes you more rich than the vast majority of people in the world. Not necessarily the vast majority of people in America, but the vast majority of people in the world. And a lot of people don't recognize that. A lot of people look at their situation and think that their life is tough. Everyone does. Really, everyone does. I think everyone wants to find struggles in their life because if life is easy, then like, what are you doing, you know? But in reality, life is great for the majority of us. Look, I have, I literally have tea. I probably paid $2 for this cup of tea. That's more than most people make in a day in the world, right? And that's, that's kind of crazy to think about, right? So call it what you want. Um, we've all been pretty lucky. Some people like to think of the idea of fate, which is um, actually kind of depressing if you think about it. It's nice if you have a good life. It's not so good if you have a bad life, though. A lot of people think that they deserve what they get in life, and I don't necessarily think that is true either, because you really think the people who are born into the you know bottom 25% of existences on Earth, you know, under some malicious dictator who's going to like kill them and take their children and whatnot, do you really think they deserve that? Obviously, no, right? But unfortunately, that's the world we live in, and we have to do our best to change those types of things because that's clearly a horrible existence for humans, and we don't want that for anyone. Um, I was reading a Wait But Why post recently. Check out waitbutwhy.com. They have lots of good thought-provoking articles, and they talk about how basically you care a whole lot more about the people around you for survival reasons, and the people on the other side of the world are basically as far away from you as they could possibly be. And you don't really, I mean, it's going to sound bad, you don't really think of them as real individual humans, but there are like millions of people over there going through a tough time. And you need to recognize that. You need to realize that we are very, very lucky to not have to deal with things like that, right? Um, so anyway, we've all been pretty lucky. We've been born into a reasonable existence. At least we've gotten to the point where we can have a smartphone or a computer, and that is fortune. If you have a smartphone or a computer, you have the ability to learn things at a very, very fast rate compared to people who do not have access to a smartphone or a computer. There are lots of people, or lots, uh, there are some various startup companies and charities that are going around and dropping off like iPads with educational material um, in, in the very poor places. And you know, they're giving them chargers with, with cell tower or um, solar, solar chargers and whatnot, and that allows them to learn at a fast rate. And as you learn things, you start to progress quicker, right? And and that's that's very good. But we all have the ability, right off the bat, to learn at a fast rate, and that gives you a very very big edge. And like my kids, right? My kid James is three years old and he's going to school. You know, I mean, like I didn't go to school, didn't get to go to school when I was three, and you know he's in theory more lucky than I was. Um, I guess I don't know. Depends on how you look at it, right? I kind of view luck as the potential opportunities you have to continue moving up in the world. Now, what does up in the world mean? That's very subjective, clearly. Why do I look so dark today? I look so dark today. Um, luck is very subjective, but at the same time, you want to make sure you're taken care of and your family's taken care of. And if you can do that, then you're probably better off than the majority of people. Okay, 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 okay. So... How else was I lucky? Well, my parents taught me the value of study, right? They, they taught me that if you study things and work hard at things, then inevitably you'll get good at things. And if you get good at things, you'll be able to better yourself, right? And that's very, very valuable. I was lucky in that I found poker at exactly the right time in life. A lot of people who really succeed at careers, they 
are often got into the career at the right place at the right time. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't, but very often that's the case. I mean, look at, um, you know, people like Bill Gates and Dell and Jobs and people like that. They just happened to grow up near a computer. Straight luck that they were born near one of the few computer terminals in the world. And, you know, then they liked that they worked hard. That was just probably luck that they fell into that. A lot of them didn't necessarily study going into that, but they did. And that was luck, right? So there's this idea. Luck is preparation plus opportunity. Um, sometimes, sometimes not though, right? Whenever you were born, did you have any say in who your parents were or where you were born? Obviously, no. You had literally no say. That actually is straight up luck. The idea of preparation plus opportunity is something different. Um, I don't know if, if luck is the right word for it. But it's something different. And there actually is just a lot of just straight luck in the world. Right? Like, say I was walking out. I mean, I just took James to school. On the walk home, I could have gotten hit by a car. Right? I could have looked both ways. Could have been smart about it. Still could have gotten hit by a car. And that is is that is that lucky or is that skill i mean that's just probably straight luck i could have got struck by lightning that's a better example i could have got struck by lightning right plenty of people walking around outside it could have struck me and i could have been dead not here with all of you today and that would have been purely bad luck some people may say it's god's will that i would get struck by lightning and die some people may say it's just um you know what nature wanted whatever whatever and that's, um, call it what you'd like, that would be unlucky. Because nobody else is getting struck by lightning right now, but that would be lucky. And, or unlucky. And that's important to recognize that some things just happen and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So, in poker, a lot of people always like to discuss luck versus skill, right? And I think that's a ridiculous thought process to begin with, because obviously there is luck in poker, and obviously there is skill in poker. I ran a little simulation for all of you. Sorry, Instagram, you can't see it. This is 1,500, I'm sorry, this is um, 100 tournaments with a 50% ROI played 10 times, okay? So this is basically 10 years of a live poker player's life if they play twice a week. And as you see, the vast majority of the time, even with a 50% ROI, they are down to break even. Somewhere in there, right? But every once in a while, they spike. There's one sample here where they just like crush it. They win 350 buy-ins in 100 games. They won two big tournaments, right? And you're gonna find that in tournaments, whenever you win something, you have good sessions. And when you don't win something, you don't have good sessions. That, these are in thousand person fields. So obviously you're not gonna win it all that often. And to win twice or take first or second twice in 100 games is clearly lucky. Now, is that luck? Is that skill? Is that some combination? Obviously, if you're playing with a positive ROI, you're going to win more than you don't. So there's skill involved, right? But you don't really control the variance beyond selecting the specific games that you play. But once you select a specific game to play, like 1,000-person tournaments where you know you have a 50% ROI, it really is just straight luck from that point. You know you're on the upward trajectory, but there's going to be a ton of variance. I mean, I'm a good example of this, right? I won World Poker Tour Player Year. Giant trophy right back there behind me. And that's because I won two tournaments back to back. I actually think I took first and second back to back in the same year. And that's just lucky. Was I doing anything differently then than I was now? Well, I was playing worse, that's the answer. And I was just lucky to, to run hot in, in a very short time frame. There have been other players who like win a tournament every other year, they're rich, but they didn't win player of the year. I was lucky to get player of the year. And inevitably, whoever is, whoever does win player of the year ran hot. Now, obviously they're good. Obviously they're playing a ton of air, a ton of volume. Don't get me wrong, but they have clearly been lucky. And I think a lot of people really don't like to accept that there's a lot of things in life, obviously in poker, that are just very clearly out of your control. Only 34 likes? Come on, man. You all don't like discussing luck. People don't like luck. I'm already going to tell you all this. That's okay. Sometimes you have to talk about things you don't like. Um, 
You're here for a little coffee, so it's not all bad. Indeed, indeed. Your software developer in Brooklyn looking for work. Any chance you get lucky and have something for you? Uh, you probably charge too much money for me. <laughs> um, if you have something you think you can help me with, send an email, support at pokercoaching.com. I'll tell you, if you want to get a job anywhere, find something that someone is doing poorly, who is also an open-minded person. I'm an open-minded person. If you tell me I'm doing something poorly, I'm not going to get angry. I'm going to fix it. Find something I'm doing poorly. Send me an email. Tell me how you'll fix it. Present a way to fix it, right? And make sure you're involved. That's how you go about getting a job in spots like that. Don't just like ask for a job because like, oh, do I need a software design engineer? Eh, you know? What about the luck factor of Fedor and Brand? I mean, yeah, they're all, everyone who has won all the money has been lucky. I mean, I've already, I've already said this multiple times. Obviously they're good. They're both world-class players, but they ran hot in a short period of time. And that's, that's fine and good, right? Is the webinar linked in the beginning open for everyone? Yes, we have a webinar coming up on Friday. Me and Michael Acevedo, he's going to be reviewing hands that I played and telling me where I went wrong. So that's good. People like to talk about how they have bad luck. They don't have good luck, though. That's just skill when they win, says Mark. And I generally agree with that. People think that they are unlucky when things go poorly and that they are skilled when things go well. Right? And that's okay. Everyone, like, everyone's trying to say, oh, these people were just super lucky. I mean, yeah, they ran hot, but they're also good. Is Negreanu good at poker and is he playing with an edge in most games he plays? Yeah, duh, right? Same with Fedor, same with Brand. They're not playing in games where they're losers. They're playing in games where they have an edge and they're putting in good volume. But like, a lot of people look at this and they, they're envious and they're not instead thinking, what can I do to replicate their success? What are they doing that I'm not doing, right? And... I'll tell you the things they're doing. They're studying a lot. They are playing a ton. And they are devoting their life to poker. And most other people are not. I'm not devoting my life to becoming the best poker player. And I'm probably doing it more than the vast majority of people. And because I have a family. I have, I have a wife and kids. This morning, I woke up, took care of the kids for two hours, took the kids to school. Well, took James to school. Came back. I'm doing this. None of this is actually helping me get better at poker, right? So this proves I am not devoting my life to get, getting better at poker. I'm devoting my life to my family and my students. And that's okay, right? Because that's not my goal in life at this point. It was my goal in life back in the day, and I you know, got very high on the player of the year ranking. I think I was like 20th or something at one point. Actually, back when the card player had it, I think I was, I think I was number two at one point. J.C. Tran was above me. And I actually made a deal with J.C. Tran that allowed him to be number one. So that was unfortunate. <laughs> Such is life, right? Variance. Who would have thought that I would have just ran hot in that year? And um, if I had just a few more points, I would have been player of the year. Instead, I made a deal at the beginning of the year with J.C. Tran that let him be the winner. Variance, luck, playing poorly, call it what you want. Anyway, um, do I have any material for playing post-slop out of position? Yeah, pokercoaching.com in the cash game masterclass. That will teach you how to play out of position in that scenario. When luck shuts the door, you got to go through the window, indeed. Are there things in my life that help me be successful in poker? Yeah, mindfulness? Eh, I'm not so sure exactly what mindfulness means yet. It's going to sound like I haven't studied it at all, but I've actually studied it a ton. I think you just have to be aware of what's going on and not thinking about the future or thinking about the past. Uh, diet. I think diet is relevant. I think you do need, to, do need to be in good shape. I think cold showers may be better at poker. I don't know. Probably not. Maybe a little bit. Um, I think people who focus on these things extensively usually have not studied actually how to get better at poker a ton. You need to get good at poker. You need to be good at poker. And then these things add little bits of ROI on top. Being in good shape adds a little bit of ROI. Um, having a clear mind adds a little bit of ROI. Cold showers, eh, that's a stretch. I think that's going to add a whole lot of ROI. But um, it's good for you probably, right? Again, see, the thing is, is I don't necessarily know I realize I don't know everything, right? A lot of people want to think that they definitively know things, but in reality, the only thing I know is that I don't actually know anything definitively. And a lot of people don't like uncertainty, but life at poker, et cetera, is full of uncertainty. Sleep is important. Yeah, sleep is important. All right, so um, other ways I've been lucky. In my career, early in my career, I 
was posting on a forum, and out of the blue, a guy named Dave Benefield, you all may know him, he's a very good poker player, named Rafter Online, randomly messaged me and said, hey, let's start talking about poker. If Dave Benefield didn't exist, I would not have had my first group of poker friends. And um, same thing with Shannon Shore. If he did not exist, I would not have had a lot of my other poker friends. So I was very fortunate that these two people existed in the world. They didn't have to exist in the world, right? They could have not gotten into poker. They could have just lost every hand they played at the beginning of their career and quit. But instead, they didn't. And those two people helped me meet all, many of the people that I know, the vast majority of them today. Many of them are my best friends. And that was very, very fortunate or lucky or call it what you want, right? But the fact that they both talked with me and, you know, just because, I, I mean, I was doing good work, right? That, that is important to recognize that I am not the best at meeting people and socializing with people. But when there's a catalyst in there that makes it happen, like Dave and Shannon both do, then inevitably good things happen. And I would not be nearly as good at poker today if that did not occur. So that's lucky that those people existed. I was lucky that, um, well, my first WPT win, where I won this circular trophy right back over here. See that little circle? Where is it? There it is. Somewhere back there by the shark's face. Um, heads up, I spiked ace two against some other ace. I don't remember what he had. He had like ace eight or ace five or something. And that was lucky, right? That was a literally $500,000 swing that was pure luck. Because we both had, I think, roughly the same chips. Maybe I had a little bit more, whatever. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is I was clearly very lucky to spike at ace two. Remember, I think I had ace two of spades and it came two twos. I'm like, oh, that's good. I win the tournament now. But 500K swing, right? And if I did not have that 500K swing, for all we know, maybe I would have gone broke or maybe I would have had to play much smaller at some point in my career. And that's really, really lucky. Again, maybe you say it's fate. Maybe you say I deserved it. Maybe you said that it was preparation, meeting opportunity, whatever. It was very fortunate. And if you've had any spikes in your life, and spikes can come in various ways. I mean, an obvious one, you could have a rich, great aunt who died and gave you $50,000 for fun. I haven't had anything like that happen, but that kind of thing happens. You could randomly buy a lottery ticket when you're 18 years old because your friends bought 10 of them and you get one of them and you spike and you win $1,000 and that changes the course of your life, right? A lot of people do have spikes in their life. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just don't have any spikes. As uh, you know, if you look at these graphs here, there are some players here. They were down $530, which was um, 50 buy-ins in this, in this sample that I have ran. There are one, two, three, four... Four, four or so samples out of 10 that just lose a 50% ROI despite despite having a 50% ROI, right? They're negative 50% even though they are actually 50%. And that's important to realize that sometimes you just don't spike. Sometimes good things are not going to happen and that's okay. You have to keep grinding and keep playing with a positive expectation, Right? Dan Blazarian was lucky, you guess. Yeah, I mean, if, look, if you have rich parents, you're clearly way better, you're way luckier than people who don't have rich parents, presumably, assuming the, the parents are decent parents and leave you money, right? And that's important to realize. Is there anything interesting for sit-and-go players, multi-table tournament players, and poker coaching? Yes, obviously there is. Have you not gone there and, and signed up for the, the trial? Go to pokercoaching.com. Sign up for Poker Coaching Premium. Go through the content. If you don't like it, cancel after a month and I'll give you a full refund. If I do not help you, I do not deserve your money. I'm not like many of the other training sites out there that want to charge you loads of money up front and then will not give you a refund. If you don't like it, I don't deserve your money. So yeah, go try it. <clears throat> There's a big difference if you win the flip, ace, king versus queens, et cetera, et cetera. But in general, you don't feel unlucky. I mean, look. There's big swings. In t tournament poker, you are going to have big swings. You just are because you don't actually get to play all that many big hands every year. Um, one of my friends, David Peters, he... I remember before he like won his first 10K, this must have been five or six years ago now, we were sitting in Malta, and he was like complaining to me that morning in the basement, thinking like, man, I, I don't know why I'm even playing these 10Ks. I win all the money online, but I, I literally just give it all back in 10K, 10K and 25K tournaments. So then the next day we played some 10K tournament and he won. 
And that was his first big win before he started just winning every tournament. And he'd been playing the 10Ks with a big edge, but just, just running poorly, right? Then all of a sudden it caught up and, and then he won all the money. I don't even know what he has in cash now, like $20 million or something. And all that came in like the last two or three years because, you know, it happens. But he was persistent and he con continued playing with an edge. And you can play, play, you can play life with an edge, right? If you show up and you have a good attitude and you work better, more efficiently, harder, more diligently, whatever, you know, better. If you work better than your opponents, everybody else around you, eventually, maybe not immediately, but eventually you will be recognized. And once you become recognized, people will start to promote you and move you up. And then people are starting to vouch for you. They're using their influence to promote you, right? And if I'm, I'm thinking about the, like the, the coaches at pokercoaching.com, right? I'm not just going around giving anyone a poker coaching deal. They all impressed me in some way. And now I'm using my influence to put them in front of you. So now they've become known by you. Also, now maybe they're getting like, they, I know they are, they're getting private coaching gigs from this and they're making significantly more money and they're getting better known if they care about that because they have done good work and it impressed someone who happened to be able to put them in front of more people. Someone sent me a message yesterday um, saying that I, I actually asked him to be a coach in the past. I think he's a very, very world-class player. And um, he said he was busy playing poker, but he'll message me in the future. He messaged me yesterday. He said, are you looking for more, more coaches? I said, no, I'm not, but I'll make an exception for you because, you know, I think, it, I think you would do great work. And that's because I've been impressed, right? And if you impress the people who, I guess in theory, make the decisions, I make the decision about my training site, maybe your boss makes a decision about your job, etc. If you show them that you are just a significantly better candidate than everyone else, then they will, they have to give you um, credibility work, etc. <sighs> Man. Someone suggests I tinker with, my, tinker with my camera settings today, and it is just like all over the place. I'm going to go re-tinker with it and fix it after we're done here. Sorry about that if the camera's a little bit rough today. All right, so life. Let's talk about life. How much luck do you have in your life? Well, obvious example for me is my wife. I met my wife at a poker tournament. My wife is not a poker player. She had literally never played a hand of poker in her life. But her dad and her brother played a little bit. And she just happened to be in the Bahamas during the PCA. She could have gone literally anywhere for her New Year's Eve trip. And she could have left a few days before the PCA started because it started on like the third or the fourth or something. Yet, there she was. She comes into the poker area. And normally when you're playing poker, you're not like overly excited having fun throwing a party. But I just happened that day to be playing a sit and go. Jonathan Jaffe, poker coaching coach, invited me to play a sit and go with him, four good heads up sit and go players and their four girlfriends. So me, four guys, four girls. And then this lady comes up behind me. Normally, you would assume the lady's with someone at the poker table. Or if anyone's watching a poker table, you presume they're with someone at the poker table, right? And I knew that was not the case that day. So we started talking. And then I talked to Amy later about this, and she said that the reason she came to my table is because we were the only table having fun. Because it was four guys and four girls waiting for poker stars to find their money because they always lost their money. And we were like, just had to hang out for two hours. So we decided to play a fun $100 buy and sit and go. And a lot of things had to go right for that to happen. My wife was also, there were two other girlfriends, but they were having a spat and those two girlfriends left. They all, all three went their separate ways. They all went different ways. And if she was with the two other girls, maybe I would not have talked to them, right? And so a lot of things had to go right. And now you may look at that and say, oh, that's just fate. That had to happen. I don't know. I don't know. Um, probably nothing would have happened unless I coached a guy named Steve Beglider for the World Series Main Event Final Table. He just happened to be having a charity tournament in New York City right after I met my wife in the Bahamas. Right after it. And so I went there and got to hang out in New York with him and also with my wife. And all of this stuff is just lucky, right? Lucky, fate, skill. Well, very little skill, right? I mean, a big hurdle right there is um, the way I knew Jonathan Jaffe is I actually beat him heads up. 
I always get confused. For that 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 thing, that globe right there, I beat Jonathan Jaffe heads up for five hundred thousand dollars. I had to beat him heads up, and he had to be someone who did not take losing for five hundred thousand dollars to someone personally. Some people take it really personally. Some people don't, right? And I mean, I'm trying to think. Like, I lost um, heads up to Scott Clements for 600k, and we're still friends. We wrote wrote a book together, right? So if you lose, or if you want, you beat a good loser, they'll still be your friend. A good loser, you know, someone who like doesn't take these things personally. You'll be friends, and I'm friends with Jonathan Jaffe, and we work together, right? Um, even back then, we were friendly. Like, if he hated me for whatever reason because he took it personally. I would not have been in that fun sit and go, and I wouldn't have been in that spot, right? So recognize that that was that was very fortunate, and well, it's fortunate at the moment. Who knows how it's going to end, right? <laughs> Presumably, it ends well, but worst case, I have two good boys out of it. Um, but I mean, who knows how the kids are going to end up, right? They may end up like horrible humans. I'm going to do my best to not make that happen. A lot of people don't like thinking about this, but it, it could happen, right? And Kind of like a poker tournament. You you do a lot of studying ahead of time. You try to prepare as best you can for the student. I'm going to, or for the tournament. I'm going to try to prepare my kids the best I can for life, but they may still screw up left and right. I mean, my parents did their absolute best to prepare me for life, and I still screwed up a bunch of things. And is that like bad parenting on their part? I don't think so. I think it was just, just it just is what it is. I think my, my problem with a lot of people who say things like this are fate is that there's a whole lot of bad fate that goes around, right? Like 9-11 um, bombing, right? You just happen to be going to work on the 9-11 that day and they decide to blow up your building. It's fate you died, you know? It's fate. Have fun. But a lot of people look at fate as like a good thing. Always. But it seems a little bit nasty to think of it as, yep, those people died. That's nice. But no, no, it's not nice. That's horrible. And I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is that like we have literally no control. And if you have no control, then you know all you can do is do your best. Maybe we're in a simulation and none of this matters. The more crazy stuff that happens in my, my life, the more, the, more I, uh, the more I start to think, oh, maybe this is just, um, maybe this is all simulation. Someone's controlling Jonathan Little and having a good laugh. <laughs> um, Hope you guys have fun. Do you see my student's quiz progress? Yes, I can see the student's quiz progress. I don't like go in there and look at every single student's quiz progress, but that's that. Um, okay, okay, okay. So I think a lot of people get in their heads that exactly what is happening to them and the people very specifically around them is all that is happening. It is all that is exists, all that exists, right? Meaning, like the other day when I said some people are in very, very bad spots, they're like, oh, I know some people who have no money living in America with a roof over their head and, you know, maybe they live off food stamps or whatever. They have they eat, they have, they have shelter, they're probably okay. They're not thinking about all the other millions of people who have it way worse. And it's because they're thinking way too close to home. And people are people to some extent. Well, they are, they are. People are people. And you need to recognize that, that just because someone did not grow up near you or related to you or, you know, with your same upbringing, etc., does not make them less worthy or deserving of reasonable things in life, right? Whereas I think a lot of people just try to segment the bad things that are happening in the world out of their mindset or they don't view that as something that's real, but it is real. And it's important to realize exactly how fortunate we all have been. And given we all have been fortunate, it's important to make the most of it. Whenever a good player gets lucky in a tournament, they win more often than they don't. When bad players get lucky in tournaments, they squander it and they don't win. We've all been lucky in life. This life is kind of like a poker tournament. And you need to not squander it. If you squander it, you have essentially ruined the very good fortune, blessing, luck, whatever you want to call it. And if you've ruined it, then uh, that, that's, that just makes you a waste. But if you make the most of it, if you rise up as high as you possibly can in this life, then you've done your job. You've done your duty. And 
I mean, just take like, I, I mean, I don't even know who my ancestors were, but presumably my ancestors were someone who decided to come to America, right? And they had to take big risks because presumably they were living somewhere and they were unhappy with their situation. And they took some insane risk to get on a boat and come across the ocean to America. Think about how crazy that is. Would you get on a boat for like a month? I don't even know how long it took. And eat rats and stuff and go across the country on the hope of having a better life, not even necessarily for you, but for your great, great, great grandchildren, right? And um, that's kind of crazy to think that they decided to make that sacrifice. Maybe it was an obvious decision. Maybe it was a sacrifice. I don't know. Um, but I mean, like you hear about this all the time where people come from countries that are doing pretty rough. They give up everything they can so that their kids have a chance to success. And that alone is really lucky that your parents or your grandparents or great-great-grandparents or whatever decided to do that. And um, we need to be thankful for these things and recognize the opportunity that we have. And if we have a great opportunity, if someone was willing to give up their all of their money, all their savings, and a load of their time and risk death for us, don't squander your time. Do not squander your time. Because that's all we have. Only 65 likes? Come on. I guess they don't like this talk. I'm telling you, people don't like the idea that um, we're lucky and perhaps we're squandering our opportunity. I've not read Play Optimal Poker. Is Modern Poker Theory a good one for explaining poker or for explaining GTO strategies? Yes. Absolutely. Modern Poker Theory, it's right down there in the corner. I helped put it together. What tools are getting better that are essential to buying? If you're playing online, something like Hold'em Manager or poker, or poker Tracker is essential. I don't know if any other stuff is actually essential because you can, um, you can, you can essentially learn from other people's doing the thing, right? All right, all right, all right. Um, is poker coaching worth it? Like I said, go sign up for free. We're not like the other sites that are going to charge you a load of money and then not let you get a refund. If you don't like my work, sign up, use it for a month, use it for 29 days after a month, yeah, you're gonna get charged. Um, use it for 29 days. If you don't like it, cancel on me. I will not be offended. If I do not add value to your life, I don't deserve it. What's the best heads up display? I just use a really simple heads up display. I don't think it's necessary to use some insane heads up display. Unless you're playing like heads up poker or you're playing against the same players all the time. I have no experience with these pre-flop plus, post-flop plus. If you're born poor, it's your fault. If you die poor, it is. I'm not even sure that's true. Think about this, right? You need way more to say that this is definitively true or not. I think if you're... It's almost like there are various ranks, right? Like you have the ultra-rich with like billions of dollars where none of us are probably going to get there. But you have people who have literally nothing. You know, parents are like not in good shape. Maybe they're drug addicts or something. They squander all of your money and all their money. And that's like... A pretty bad spot to be in. You cannot have parents. That's probably a pretty bad spot to be in. Um, you can very easily move up the ladder one or two or three length ranks. You can easily make, you know, go to college and get a degree and have a decent living. I think that's very feasible. Are you going to become a billionaire? Probably not. It's probably very close to impossible. You're going to become a millionaire maybe by the time you're done. Again, this is just pure theory. I could be very wrong about this. If you start off where your parents are already millionaires a generation later, right? Maybe you made a lot out of your really bad situation. And, you know, maybe you end up dying, you have a million bucks to your name, you worked, worked a good life. And um, your kids have a much better starting point than you, right? So you went from the bottom rung to middle rung, which is actually a very good jump. If you go from a middle rung to a higher rung, you jumped up. Question is how high up can you jump? Like there's very close to zero percent chance I'm going to end up being a billionaire by the time I die. It's just tough, and it's probably not going to happen. There is a chance though that my kids do because they're already starting off at a very solid base, um, and their kids' kids they very easily could too. The problem is is that sometimes you fall down the ladder, right? Um, some generations fall down the ladder, some generations fall up the ladder, and I think there's a lot of variance to that. But a lot of things have to go right for you to spike. And obviously, sometimes you do just spike really hard. But um, it's pretty, pretty hard to spike. 
Bill Perkins wants to die with nothing. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of um, making sure you give away or put to use all the money you have by the time you die. It's easier said than done because um, obviously time is very relevant, but you could like, like you die and you have a trust and give away whatever you have left. I know Warren Buffett said that he's like giving away all of his money besides like a million dollars each to his kid. A million dollars is like nothing when you have billions, right? Billion, billions, no billions, <laughs> many billions. Um, but I mean, I think that's probably a good way to do it, right? Show your kids that you have crushed it. And again, that's someone who came from like, you know, modest living to the tip top. It doesn't happen all that often. It happens two or three times. Make some shirts that say spike hard. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. A long time ago, you used to beat the games and now you can't. Well, because the games are tougher. People got better. Does hold a manager go from small stakes or all stakes? Isn't the data the same? I don't know. I think, I think one of them has um, full access to all of these stats and the other one doesn't, but I'm not entirely sure. The luck you have depends on the situation you put yourself into. For example, I disagree because I did not get to pick when I was born or where I was born. Think about this. If we were born just 500 years ago, not all that long in terms of how long humans have been there, been here, if I was born 500 years ago, I pretty much would have had to do whatever my parents did. Because that's just what everybody did. If your dad was a farmer, you're going to be a farmer. If your dad was a blacksmith, you're going to be a blacksmith. If your dad was the king, well, you're going to be the king. And think about the opportunity that we have that we can do literally whatever we want. My dad works on power lines, but I did not have to work on power lines. I was not even pushed in the direction of having to work on power lines. And that's important to recognize that the opportunity we have is amazing. And that's through no skill or good play or anything like that of our own at all. Through no skill of our own. So you need to recognize that, that we actually are just straight up lucky. Could have been born um, 1,500 years ago where everybody had literally nothing, right? I enjoy my air conditioning and indoor plumbing personally. Which poker websites do I recommend? I enjoy Party Poker. They have good games. I think Poker Stars has fine games. I-888 has fine games. I like the license regulated places. What is card removal? Basically, it's the idea that whenever someone has a specific card, that you can no longer have that card. For example, say the Ace of Spades is on the board. You know your opponent can't have the Ace of Spades. If um, you have the Ace of Spades in your hand, you know your opponent can't have the Ace of Spades. So if there's three spades on board and your opponent bets, maybe that's the spot you raise as a bluff with that Ace of Spades because you know they can't have the nuts. How should you deal with having really bad luck? Realize it doesn't matter. That's the real, the real thing at the end of the day. You get to play the cards you are dealt in life. I hate to use poker analogies, but you actually do. You get dealt a hand, and you get actually dealt a lot of hands in your life, and you get to pick how you respond to every single decision. You can react poorly, or can you, you can react well. And a lot of people react poorly to a lot of things. For example, let's go back over here to our, our charts. Let's say you do just have four years in a row of minus 50% ROI. It's going to happen, right? Four years in a row, minus 50%. At my World Series of Poker, actually, just think about my career. I've had two, two World Series of Pokers where I um, I, I lost like every tournament. I was like over 50. Two, two in a, two in a, two, uh, they were a little bit apart, but whatever. Two in a row, over 50. Did I just like get angry and quit? No, I didn't get angry and quit. I kept playing because I knew I was playing with an edge and I knew that in turn, or over time, it, it would turn. But it could have been a very long time. I was kind of lucky in that it was only 50 games or so. I was lucky to spike. Spiked hard both times right after it. But that's that. What's the next level of card rule? Hidden outs. I don't even know what you're referring to here. You're just like throwing out catchphrases. People love throwing out catchphrases. If you go to any, well, most training sites, they're all about throwing out catchphrases that are popular at the moment. And um, don't fall for the hype. What do you think of Global Poker as a poker, a legal poker site in the U.S.? I don't think it's definitively legal. If they were legal, they would be licensed and regulated, and they're not licensed or regulated in America. I believe they currently use sweepstakes law, but they're obviously not a sweepstakes. So give it time. 
What tea am I drinking? I'm drinking some green tea. It's called Detox Green Tea from David's Tea. I don't actually like it all that much, but I have a bag of it, so. I like oolong tea a lot. I like um, coffee a lot. Purity Coffee sent me some coffee. It was great. McLaughlin Coffee sent me some coffee in the past. It was great. So I like coffee. I like green tea, and I like oolong tea, and I like white tea. White tea's good. I like just plain, bland white tea. It tastes kind of like dirt. It's really good. What's important to reviewing your hands you play to figure out where you screwed up so you don't screw up again in the future. You save 300 euros a month. Your house and life is paid for. You're going to start to play more. Where should you start other than poker coaching? You should start playing small stakes tournaments since, or small stakes cash games, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I really don't like this tea. I mean, to be fair, look, it's important to realize you don't have to like everything you do. I have this tea. It's fine. Why don't I like it? Let me think about this. It's not straight green tea. For some reason, I like just straight green tea or straight oolong tea or straight black tea, straight white tea. I like tea with like nothing in it. Just just the tea leaf. If I wanted to drink a bunch of nonsense, I would um, eat a, drink a soup. So yeah. Have I played on Bovada? No. I don't play on the unlicensed, unregulated sites because I don't need to and I don't want to. I don't like to deal with nonsense. And those sites introduce a whole lot of nonsense. So do I want nonsense in my life? No, I do not. <sighs> Maniac says, you highly recommend poker coaching. Well, good. Thank you. I appreciate it. So going back to the luck versus skill discussion in poker, there is more luck in games where you cash out less often. So which games do you cash out less often? Tournaments, obviously, right? So there's more luck, or call it variance, in these games. But you can do a whole lot of things to adjust your variance level by playing tournaments that have fewer players, for example. I used to play sit and goes all day every day, 10 person tournaments, and they had, or I had a small return on investment, like 5% ROI, 10% ROI, right? But if you play a thousand of these or 3,000 of these, you win literally every time. Let me go ahead and run a simulation, I'll show you. Let's see, number of players, 10. Number of places played, paid, three. Buy-ins, $10 with 10% rake. ROI is 10%. How many am I gonna play? I'm gonna play 3,000 of these, okay? Let's see. As you see here, here's our graph. Every single one of them just goes straight up, right? Sure, every once in a while over 1,000 games you win uh, 50 buy-ins or what, 500 buy-ins. Sometimes you win 200, but whatever, you're all just gonna win. What if we instead play, that's over 3,000 games. What if we play 30,000 games? This is a year worth of play. As you see, every single sample wins. Okay, that's a year worth of play at sit and goes if you're, you're grinding pretty hard. You win every single time somewhere between 29, how many buy-ins is this? 2,900 buy-ins or 3,700 buy-ins. So actually pretty close spread. Let's say instead we're playing a thousand person tournaments that pay 15% of the field. Let's say their buy-in's the same or same ROI. We'll actually give you a 50% ROI, but you're gonna play way fewer of these. You're gonna play what? How many online tournaments can you play a day? 20? 20, let's get a calculator so I don't screw this up. 20 times 365 equals 7,300 tournaments. This is how many online player will turn it, play in a year. Roughly, you see here, you still win basically every time over the course of the year, but the spread is way bigger. We have somewhere between plus um, 4,300 buy-ins and 2,700 buy-ins. So one had a spread of like 5,000, this one has a spread of 15,000. And that's important to recognize, right? But in the long term, it just doesn't matter. Easy to play 4,000 a year. Well, yeah, I did 7,300 for like a, an actual real grinder. So realize that you can do things to get rid of variance, right? Easiest way to do it, play with a bigger edge, play with a smaller field. Now, cash games offer much lower variance because in cash games, you usually have winning or losing sessions. If they're comparable size, if you win, let's say, you know, 60% um, of the time and lose 40% and you win and, lo win and lose the same amount, you're obviously gonna go upwards, right? It's gonna be pretty consistent. So that's why I often suggest players who are getting started to play cash games 
because cash games offer low variance. Low variance is great whenever um, whenever you're trying to get started, when you have a low bankroll, right? Sit and goes are non-existent today. I mean, small stakes, they still exist, and you can still put in a decent amount of volume, especially if you're willing to play between sites. But yeah, it's not a good way to get rich. I'd certainly agree with that. Um, which is why I don't recommend sit and goes to anyone. It's why I don't actually have a ton of sit and go content or much of any sit and go content on poker coaching because the game doesn't exist. I don't want you to spend a lot of time studying a game that um, that doesn't really exist. Would that be four thousand, forty three thousand dollars a year? Yeah, if your average buy in is ten dollars, okay, ten dollar buy in, you're gonna play like a really full slate, twenty games a day, every day you will win somewhere between 25K and uh, 45K a year-ish, give or take. Something like that. Now, obviously, if you make it 100, the numbers will be times 10, which is a whole lot more. What's a good way to get rich? Add a lot of value to a lot of people. If you add a lot of value to a lot of people, they will inevitably help you out. Think about what I do, right? I have a poker coaching site that adds value. It adds value. And people are willing to pay me because they get way more value out of it than I charge. And I mean, I have students who used to make no money. Now they're making $50 an hour playing 2-5 no limit. And they went from wasting their time at poker to now, well, let's get a calculator. If they, a lot of them have become full-time players. 40 hours a week times $50 an hour times four weeks a month. Let's say they take off a little bit of time. They make $8,000 a month from poker now, times 12. They make $96,000 a year from poker, whereas they were making none just six or eight months ago. So what is that worth? To have a skill that will make you $96,000 a year that takes you you know, a few months of study, a few months of effort to get good at, what is that worth? I mean, certainly worth 100 bucks a month, right? If you make $96,000 a year, you can probably afford $1,000 a year for training, for coaching, right? You can afford way more than that. But that's a good example of adding value, right? I've literally added $96,000 a year or more to some of these people's lives for the next, well, until live poker dies, which it's not, for a good long time. So what's that worth? I mean, it's like literally worth a million dollars to each of these people. If you give people a million dollars in value, they're more than happy to give you some back. I'm not asking for a million or even half of it or a third of it, right? I'm asking for a thousand bucks a year. And that's very, very relevant. Maniac here said he made 1800 bucks in December. Good, right? I mean, think of the value. You disagree with my statement that it's that you, not possible to make good money at sit and goes. You can make a lot of money at small and micro stakes if you put in volume. Exactly. So, add. Very important, very important. I think that you should play games where you can conceivably make 100K a year or more per year. It's got the calculator. Calculator, calculator. $5 sit and goes. Let's say you're going to play, let's say you have a 10% ROI, making 50 cents a game. Let's say you're going to play 5,000 a month, a lot. Like that's a pretty good amount of volume. 2,500 a month times 12 months a year, $30,000 a year is probably about the cap at $5 sit and goes. Let's say you double it. You're making 60K a year. You're like just crushing them. 60K a year is probably about the cap at $5 sit and goes. 60K a year is not enough to have a thriving living in America, which is where a lot of my students come from, just because I guess I'm American and I've had most of my success in America. So do I wanna teach people to devote a lot of time to get really good at one specific game where the most they can make a year is 60K a year? Well, the answer is no. I'd rather teach them to make 100,000 a year just as easily, right? And why not teach them to make more money just as easily and also not have to sit and grind in front of the computer all day every day, right? I mean, that, that 30,000 year I, I showed was this player playing 5,000 games a month. Or that's, that's, that's a pretty good amount. So figure that one out, right? I just don't think, it, I mean, yes, it's a good way to turn some money into a little bit more money, but it's not a great way to get rich. Now, obviously, if you live in a place where $30,000 a year is like infinite money, then sure, it's a great way to do it. Great way to do it consistently, especially if you don't have live cash games available because a lot of places like that, if they're playing cash games, are way smaller stakes. But that's not the situation most of my students are in. It's what they, some of them are in. And I do tell people, if you have a little bit of money, and especially, especially, if you want to get good at tournaments one day, 
Because I think that's actually where you start making significantly more money with way more variance, but you make more money because you can play higher buy-ins. Um, Sengos are a good way to go because you will learn how to play final tables very well. I mean, I started playing Sengos. If you don't know this, I played more Sengos than probably almost every Sengo player in the world. And it's very useful. It's a very good skill to have. But is it mandatory to do that if you want, if your goal, your end game is to make 100K a year playing poker? I think absolutely not. I don't think it's necessary at all. You can just go play 2-5 no limit, grind out 96K a year. And if you really want to play, like I used to play, just play 70 hours a week at Bellagio, playing 5-10, making about 120 an hour. I'll show you what like a good player can do in cash games. You make this amount per week, times 52 weeks a year, make about 400K from cash games if you actually sit there and really grind hard. And I really grinded hard for about two years. And, you know, it's hard. It's a lot of work. But that's with a good win rate playing in games that were running around the clock because 510 ran around the, run, run around the clock at Bellagio. And you can make 400K a year. Now, if you want to play regular hours, you want to play half that, you'll make 200K a year. 200K a year is a good living basically everywhere. Actually everywhere. And that is achievable if you are just willing to work a little bit harder. You didn't, can I go through my calculation again for sit and goes? Yeah, so $5 games, that's our buy-in, times your return on investment. You probably have about 10% return on investment in sit and goes. Maybe it's a little more, maybe it's a little less, I don't know. Making 50 cents per game, okay? How many games are you gonna play per month? I said 5,000, because I was trying to give this person the benefit of the doubt. 5,000 is a lot of games, okay? 5,000 games. That's how much money you make per month, playing $5,000, $5 sit and goes, times 12 months a year equals $30,000 per month. I'm sorry, $30,000 per year. For cash games or any game, how much do you make per hour? Let's say you're playing 2-5 no limit. Um, you're making 50 bucks an hour. As, as I'll, I'll, I'm telling you, I have a lot of students who are doing exactly this. Times, say you put in 35 hours a week, that's how much you make per week times 52 weeks per year, 90,000-ish, right? So anyway, anyway, there you go. Do I think $3 sit and goes are soft? I don't know. I haven't played them. I presume they are, but I don't know. All right, I have to go. What I want to say is that life is a short-term game. I know everyone wants to think it's a long-term game. I know everyone wants to think that their decisions are vitally important. But at the end of the day, you really don't get to make all that many meaningful decisions in life. And that is important to recognize. Yeah, what about taxes? Pay your taxes so you don't go to jail. Someone asked me the other day, why, why do you care about the laws? We're living in 2020 with cryptocurrency. I don't want to go to prison. That's why. I don't want to lose a load of money, et cetera, et cetera. Um, have I played MTG Arena? No, because I do not like standard. Um, so anyway... Realize there's a lot of luck and that's okay. Embrace it, enjoy it. You're gonna have upswings and you're gonna have downswings. Sometimes you're gonna just come into a load of money. Sometimes someone's gonna die who you love, right? That is going to happen. And when it does, all you can do is respond to it in the most productive way that you realistically can. Not saying not to grieve, don't be sad, don't go through um, emotions, but at the same time, Realize that we are all immensely lucky. If you are here watching this on a smartphone or a computer, you have more opportunity than almost every human who has ever lived in existence. And it's your job to not squander it. Have a great day.